Welcome back to Demystifying 5G, a video series brought to you by Roden Schwartz. In the recent video, we discussed uplink downlink allocations and the 5G in our slot formats, making it a very flexible air interface. And I provided you with an example based on the subcarrier spacing 120 kilohertz. And uh, the goal is now to basically configure our SMW 200A vector signal generator to generate that signal and then uh, using the FSW signal and spectrum analyzer to analyze that signal. So 120 kilohertz is used for FR2. So the frequency I set here on my instrument is 28 gigahertz. Um, and I already loaded that personality. So let's go through a few steps here that you can see that we can now create this uplink signal. Um, as a reminder, here's this particular configuration that we will talk about. Um, basically what we're trying to do is generate the uplink portion of that particular signal. So that means there's uh, in the beginning no transmission, then an uplink transmission, then again a gap and so forth that repeats uh, throughout the radio frame. So we need to generate 10 subframes and uh, with a sub spacing of 120 kilohertz we have 8 slots per subframe and uh, periodicity was 1.25 uh, milliseconds, so we have a mismatch here. That's why it's a little bit more complex to configure that signal, but with the SMW and the FSW, that isn't a problem. So let's open up the 5GNR personality and take a quick look here. So I navigate to 5GNR. You see I set the uplink direction already, uh, in uh, the direction already into uplink. We can now, in the node section, configure basically um, our cell ID that the deployment frequency range is greater than 6 gigahertz, so that allows us then to generate a 100 megahertz uh, signal, uh, including the subcarrier spacing of 120 kilohertz, like shown here. Um, and then basically I have to go into the scheduling uh, part of it, and what you basically see here now is my scheduled part. So I'm looking in subframe 9 right now, but let's go back to the beginning and look at subframe uh, 0. So if you see and compare that now to this uh, signal configuration that we discussed, in the very first subframe, in slot number 7, we basically occupy for the very first time four of the M symbols at the end of that slot. That's why we set it here to four and then to uh, 10 symbols offset because the slot is 14 symbols in total. Um, and that was followed by uh, two full slots in the uplink with uh, 14 symbols being used for the uplink transmission for the PUSCH. So that would mean that if we change this to the next subframe, we would expect now two allocations that allows us to configure slot zero and one. We have 14 symbols, and again, we occupy the uh, full bandwidth. If you're asking me now what type of modulation scheme I'm using, I just have to uh, hit here the configuration button, and then you can basically see that you can set uh, the configuration uh, of the modulation scheme accordingly. So now I have to repeat that throughout the, the frame. If you look at subframe uh, two, we see we have three allocations again. Uh, the one for that special slot where we using a flexible slot configuration in the beginning was downlinked and there was the gap of four symbols and at the end uh, four uplink symbols. Again, that's being configured here in the very first um, allocation for the PUSCH and so forth. So you see here the configuration, the flexibility is given in the instrument and at the end of that uh, I'm basically just uh, switching on the button, let the waveform be calculated by the instrument and I'm ready to go. So that means we would be uh, ready to analyze now. Um, <clears throat> what you see basically here is the results of that measurement. Um, obviously um, a few things to point out. You see here we're doing an error vector magnitude measurement. This is at 28 gigahertz, 100 megahertz wide signal. We measure an EVM of negative uh, 42.26 dB, well below 1%, so an outstanding performance, I would say. You see here the constellation diagram, but I guess uh, to see the TDD character of that signal, we basically have to take a look here at the allocation summary. And now you basically see the green parts is my PUSCH with the embedded uh, DMRS, the demodulation reference signals. And you see here constantly <clears throat> that gaps where um, in reality, since it's a TDD system, um, a downlink would be transmitted, but as we're trying to generate a, a signal for uplink and for testing, for instance, a power amplifier and so forth, you see here basically now uh, we're transmitting, we are off, we're transmitting, we are off and so forth, uh, which is basically the intent of that whole scenario. So I hope you have seen that with the SMW and FSW, you can basically create these uh, um, complex challenging signals to test RF components as an example, like a power amplifier, test filters, test the full RF front end. 
Um, this is something that we will uh, continue to explore in our video series, Demystifying 5G.